Hey folks, welcome back to another 10 minute job. Today, we're finally going to change the oil on my 15 Silverado. So I've been kind of mentioning that in a couple of my other videos. Um, that truck right there, that's my 15 Silverado. I haven't changed the oil on that in, I think I'm right at, or very close to 17,000 miles. So if we look here, right here, Oil itself says up to 25,000 miles, and so does the filter. I haven't changed either one since, like I said, 17,000 miles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain it, and I'm actually going to send away a sample. So that's what this is. This is Blackstone Oil Analysis. Very curious to see what the results are, if you will, and what that oil's lifespan, what kind of wear, and all that kind of stuff is going to give us a lot of cool information. So that will be right away for you guys pretty much because I'm going to send away and then I'll post the video. But you'll get to see it right away. Um, and I think I might also, I guess you'll know as well again, I might do the unused. I don't know if they already have that on file, that kind of data, because what's the point if I can't compare new to old, right? I don't know. I'm going to kind of call them up, see what they say. They may already have this on file. Again, it's the AMSOIL. 0W20 for my truck, that's what it takes. Um, that's basically cold viscosity and hot viscosity. That's what those mean, in case you don't already know. Um, so let's get to it though. This video is really about changing the oil, which is super simple, and there's more schmutz. There, got them. Well, that's better. All right, so let's change the oil. <laughs> Alright folks, so we're up under the truck obviously, um, we're going to go ahead and drain the oil, obviously, kind of step one besides jack it up, put it on jack stands, um, this right here is our drain, and right here is obviously our filter, so I'll start here, now this is warm, and you want it warm, um, that helps it flow better, and also, to the point of taking our sample, the instructions that come with it say a couple things, one of which is to get your sample while the oil, like you've just run the vehicle. And then the second part of that is they recommend you grab your sample kind of mid, mid, uh, midstream, if you will. Uh, can't think of the word. But basically, I'm going to let it start flowing out of here. Um, give it a second and then grab my sample real quick so it's not the very bottom, I think, is the idea where things could have potentially settled. But um, that's where we're at. So I've got a sample container. I've got my drain pan. And I've got my sockets. That is all we need. One thing whenever you're changing oil, you want to kind of think about the angle. So this face right here is kind of pointed. I don't know if you can tell. It's kind of pointed this way. So that means the oil is going to flow out this way. So if I put it directly below, I'm going to miss everything. And I'm probably going to miss a little bit anyways. It's just the way it goes. And that's why I have all this cardboard down here. Because you're pretty much always going to spill a little bit. So I want to catch that. Let's see. Let's try. I don't think that looks like larger than 9 16 That metric, of course. Which means it's, what, 15? That's a 14. Let's try 15. Bingo. So what I like to do is just crack it loose. Like that. And then I'm going to finish most everything out of the way. Get my little sample container ready. And try to line this up. I'm going to move over here. Again. It's going to shoot out and I'm pushing it the wrong way. Get here to where I can get some oil. See that's dripping right there. Little 
container ready. I come up here. And let's cut the threads. There we go. Got my sample. Let that drain out. And now, as it's draining down, I'm going to kind of follow it with such a catch pin. Got my sample and we'll obviously clean this all up. I'm going to set it over here. Try to reach my lid. So now we'll just let that drain for a minute. And then we'll take the uh, filter off. Now, even though we've drained the oil or most of it, this still has a lot of oil in it. It's still going to want to make a mess. So what I'm going to do is temporarily stop that flow, move my container as best I can directly below the filter. Go. I like to let that drain. Sometimes there's just no way good, good, no good way of doing this. But take your time. Just let that drain out. Water dripping on my head. <laughs> Lovely. Right into my eyeball. Gotta love that. Alright, I'm tired of waiting. See what happens? I just told you all to be patient. Look at me. Wait, wait. It's warming. Yeah. Alright, here we go. Try to keep it upright. And then flip it over. <laughs> it looked like a pro right there. Flipped it right over into the catch band. So that's that. Again, let it drain. While that's draining, go grab the new filter. Alright folks, I'm back. Got the new filter. Pretty well done draining, I think. I'm going to go ahead and pop this new filter in here. You can see the AO17. I don't know if you can read that or not. What came out. Again, it's that 25,000 mile. The AO17 is what's going back in, of course. It's done draining. Get it out of the way for now. Start working with our new filter. So, what we're going to do. Fill this with new oil. Make sure we get oil around the ceiling ring. Kind of a two for one deal. Again, I'll probably make a mess, but I'm gonna try not to. Doing good, doing good. Oh, we're going up. Oop, there she goes. Alright, let me just get some of this new oil. Should we go around this surface? That prevents it from binding up as you tighten her down. And of course, the only hand tightener, and in fact, it says in giant instructions, I might as well show you that upside down. See, it says right here, oil the ring, right? Make sure you oil, or fill the oil, fill with the oil, I'm sorry. Oil the ring, 
twist it on with your hand, it's hand tightening, and then it wants you to go another three quarters after hand tightening. I don't know if that's because they assume your hands are going to be all oily and you won't get a good grip. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're going for. But I'm just going to hand tighten it with two hands. I can get around to it. <sighs> That's gonna be more than good enough. It's exactly what I did last time, it caused no issues. Alright, let me put my plug back in. I'm kind of looking at this seal. This has a reusable seal on it. Just kind of inspecting that. Back in here. Grab my ratchet. Torque to spec. Right there. Perfect. Clean up a bit. There you have it, folks. Hmm. What do I do with that cap? Oh, right here. All right, so all the oil's out. Now we get out from underneath it here. We go up top and start talking about the next step. All right, folks, so got our sample here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill everything out. So what happens is, show this little guy out. Doesn't seem to specifically say where to put this, but I mean, I can only assume it goes right on here. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, need to go check the miles. Show you guys that. How many miles are on this oil and on the truck? I think I just hit like 80,000 on the truck. I don't know if you can see that right down. Oops. Yeah, hood's open. I get it. Oh, good grief. Just missed that. Boy, that's annoying. 80,485. That's trip A. Trip B is the one I haven't reset since the last time I changed the oil. I'm at 17,000. Right on top. Wrap it in this. Throw it in there. So we're wrapping it in this, what I've always called pig mat. It's just absorbent padding. Use it in industrial settings a lot. It soaks up any leaks or anything like that really well. That, some air out of here. That, and they sent this mailer, comes with it. So all I gotta do, put this all together, fill out my card throw it in the mailbox. Boom. Done. Uh, Sorry about that. Can't remember how long they said, but I'm guessing, I mean, probably two weeks at least. We'll see. Um, for you guys, it'll be no time at all because I'm going to wait to post this video till I get results. Otherwise, there's no, there's no point. So with that done, we're now going to go, oh geez, am I blinding you? Get that thing out of there. We're gonna fill it back up. So we're obviously empty on oil right now. Fill it back up. I've got my two gallons. Uh, I think it takes just below that. Let's find out. Fine. All right, back in the trusty hands manual. Looking for capacities. This should be under tune up and routine maintenance. Chapter one, 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 go to the front. Tune up routine maintenance contents, fluid lubricants, engine oil. There it is. Meets GM Dexos 1, and I'm pretty darn sure this exceeds Dexos 1. AC Deco Dexos 1, synthetic or equivalent. Where is my Dexos? There it is, right there. Hopefully, you guys can see that right there. Boy, get some light on that. Okay, so we're good to go. 
cut the right oil. I already knew that. Um, so now capacity, that's what we're doing. Capacity is right here. The next page, capacities, engine oil, V8 engines, all models, six quarts, except five liter Vin C, L83, 6.2, Vin J. Yep, yep, because that would be the diesel 5.3, Vin C, the L83, and the 6.2 diesel get eight quarts. So I am at six quarts. Let's see, there's four quarts in a gallon, right? Right? Yeah. Sounds good. So I've got eight quarts exactly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start tapping out. Regardless, you always want to, of course, just keep checking your level through the dipstick and make sure the truck is sitting level. So my next step is to take off jack stands. Okay. All right, folks, so now, again, we're gonna to top this off. And again, I'm gonna talk about not jamming your thumb down into these foil seals. Last thing you want, get any little bits of that metal down into your engine. I'm gonna pop both of these open. By the way, I went ahead and did my research properly. And um, I do have the C in my VIN which means I have the L83, which means I get eight quarts. That's probably why I bought two gallons, right? Not because they come in two gallon increments or anything. But anyways, it's the eighth digit in your VIN on these 2014 to 2018 GMC Chevy Silverado Sierras. It's the eighth digit. If you have a C on a 5.3 liter, you've got eight quarts going into this guy course second one wants to fight me there we go Amazon guys here not for me luckily <laughs> no money spent this week right boom whole piece that's what we want to see put that cap back on though all right so now I'm gonna turn you around over here you can watch me make a mess. Ooh, sit still. There we go. All right, so not really a big fan of this angle they've got going on. I'm gonna have to hold the funnel just like so as I pour. You probably can't see anything that's going on. No, not really. I'm pouring oil. It's very thrilling stuff. One nice thing about the zero weight, cold weight, viscosity being so low. Low? High? Yeah, I think it's low. It means it runs faster, even when it's not heated up. That's, for, that's to help with cold starts, by the way. That's why they use the zero weight, the zero W20. Less friction on startup. It's the idea. all four quarts one gallon in there and we'll move on to the next container so for the next one folks i'm going to go to half so that'll be six quarts total so we already put a little bit in the filter put a six i'm gonna go to the six six and a half see if i get a reading on the dipstick and then we will start topping it off from there last thing you want to do is overfill it because then you've got to start draining or sucking it out or something nonsense like that you don't want to have to go through that All right, that's good enough cap that guy off and get rid of it scratch my nose because i have gloves on i think you got a nice view from on top of the intake manifold so you get to see me pour oil from a whole different angle oh my goodness how exciting Thank 
correct. It means I put in six and a half quarts plus what I poured into the filter, which is maybe half a quart, probably a little less. It is a big filter. But anyways, let that drain for a minute. Oh, you stare at it draining. <laughs> Beautiful footage today, folks. Ugh. Clean up that mess a little bit. So we'll let that drain a little bit and then we will check the level. Be right back. Okie dokie. Get in there. Hold it down, pull it out. And we're showing. Probably can't see it. It's showing high. But my experience, that pretty much just means it hasn't drained down all the way yet. Again, we counted out our quartz, we checked our van. We're gonna trust it. So I'm just gonna let it drain for a little bit here and then check it again. We're back. So I just spent the last, probably entirely too much time <laughs> waiting for the oil to drain to the bottom. And I passed the time by wiping down all this plastic in here. So every new truck I get, they add five more pieces of plastic. Where are we at? There you go, very bottom. If you can see that right there, try to get some different angles. But it's at that bottom dot. I don't know if you can see that dot. But that's essentially the bottom of the range. It's to be expected. So we shall continue to fill. So usually... I'd have to check on this one, but typically that range that I just showed you is essentially dot to dot or cross hatches up and down. Typically from the bottom of that to the top is one quart. And we have, I'm sitting on this bar, essentially right at two quarts. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna switch hands. I'm gonna put almost one quart in. That was under port. Gave it a little bit to drain. I'm showing right up top. I'm gonna leave that. Start the engine up. Let it warm up. And then we will check it again. Like I said, just gonna let it run. Make sure all that oil works into all the nooks and crannies. Warms up, and then um, we'll check the level again. While I'm in here, what I've been doing, by the way, I've been checking all my fluid, the brake fluid. Pretty much right in the middle. This thing's sitting at an angle. Coolant over here. Full cold. Should be up to here. Yeah, a little low. If that's been that way, I've been monitoring that, it's fine. The um, reason I'm not topping it off is because I plan to do a coolant flush. Great, you guys are dirty again. Another. I'm going to do a coolant flush on this guy, um, so that's why I'm not topping it off. Um, I'm just going to let it run for a second. Probably need more washer fluid. I don't think I have any. Uh, I'm going to check the transmission fluid, change that a little bit ago. Be good. All right. Okay, here we go. Final check. By the way, little tip trick: if you're having trouble reading the oil level on your dipstick, it may just be dirty. Just take some brake clean to it. Wipe it down real good. Should help out a lot. All right, here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. 
we are just under the top dot. Looking good, looking real good. I'm, I'm gonna leave that well within range, obviously. Leave that and then um, got again, my 200 mile round trip to work tomorrow. So I'll check it after that. So, um, checked all my fluids. We're all good looking. Everything's looking beautiful. Again, my OCD's kicked in. All these plastics, it's just plastic everywhere. Just collect dust. I did a little bit of um, what's it called? Armor. By the way, you guys may not know this trick, but these things, lids, suck, right? Lids always suck. They're always leaking. These things always end up dried out. Simple fix. Just dump some water in there. Shake it around. Absorbs that water. The uh, chemicals, whatever it uses, it's still in there. Works pretty good to me. Um, and then uh, what I do actually is I wipe it down with these. And then wipe it down with a shirt to spread it out because otherwise it's going to collect a lot of dust but anyways <laughs> that is quite enough for today so that's the oil change on a 2015 or 14 through 18. Let's see what the book says again 14 through 19. silverado gmc sierra 1500 models right there that's what this applies to um again by the time you guys see this video, I will have those results on the oil, the old oil I pulled out. We'll see what it tells us. Look forward to it. Thanks. Hey folks, um, so today, um, this is a continuation, I forgot, yeah. So, continuing on, I got the results back from Blackstone Labs on that oil sample analysis. So I sent in a little kit and they emailed me back with the results and here they are so try to hold this nice and steady for you so this is just about me um, about the vehicle 5 point liter v8 ecotech 3l83 and then the oil type again ams oil signature 0w20 how long between the oil change 17,000 miles gasoline 1500 I deleted all my personal info, of course. And then right here, hopefully this comes through well, this blurb is kind of a summary of the whole analysis. So they basically are telling me that um, everything looks pretty good, um, especially considering how long the whole 17,000 miles. Um, he, he tells me on average that um, with this engine, and that's what this universal averages column is, it's about this engine, not oil type or anything like that. That's based on this engine and 6,600 miles. You get these values here. And so my metals, my heavy metals are higher than the universal averages. And that's because I want so much longer than the average. So really, this doesn't matter to me. So now all these blank ones, by the way, if I, next time I do an oil change, I do this again, send it in, this one will move over to here and the new one will go here. So it's a history that I can build up and track the status of my engine, essentially. And so you can do the same thing yourself, of course, obviously. Um, it was $30 to send this in and get the results back. Not too bad. I guess it depends on what you use your vehicle for. Um, I don't know how OCD you are, maybe. Um, but I think it's pretty neat. I'm not sure if I'll do it again. And I'm also not sure how long I'm going to go. And so the big thing here is, you may notice, the last thing he tells me at the bottom of the comments is try up to 20,000 miles. Again, this oil, oh my goodness, I think it's buried. But this oil, there it is, is rated to go, oil and filter, they're rated to go 25,000 miles. So here it is. Right there so again it's ready to go 25,000 miles um, that's a long time so again you can tell I only went 17 um, he's telling me to try 20 because everything looks good to him um, by the way I did do the TBN right down here that is an additive test um, an additional test on the additives <laughs> however you say that basically it's what kind of wear protection is left in the oil after you know where we're at now um and it looks good it's at 2.7 and anything above one is good and so he says that here the tbn is 
good since 1.0 or less is low and the trace fuel is harmless he also says that so the only thing you may notice this is in bold the flashpoint get real close there so that is right on kind of the bare minimum but we're there so it's not the end of the world and he doesn't really mention it being a problem that's for sure um, but he says oil did good so I'm gonna obviously stick with this oil again I don't think I'm gonna go to 20,000 miles I kind of want to see what an analysis will look like at you know a standard synthetic I'll call it six sixty five hundred seven thousand mile mark see what it looks like at that point and then maybe I'll go back up because the one thing that I did notice after I did this oil change is that it felt the truck felt smoother I don't know it's, it's harder to hard to describe but it felt smoother it felt a little more peppy honestly I'm not gonna lie it felt a little more peppy and so that kind of concerns me obviously if I'm losing you know it's it's struggling it's it's working harder to produce the same outcome if that makes any sense um, so that's kind of worrisome obviously um, I want max performance fuel economy all that stuff goes along with that along with how long it's gonna last that's the big thing right so again I plan to keep this truck for a long time um, so that's your update um, that pretty much ends the video so again please like subscribe thumbs up all that stuff leave me some comments let me know what you think um, what do you guys think I should do should I go 7,000 miles and do another oil change another analysis or should I try what Blackstone <laughs> recommends and go all the way to 20,000 miles on this oil change um, let me know in the comments really love to hear what you think um, thanks again another 10 minute job done everybody have a good one bye